stuff. I'm sick of this stuff. We have to talk about it because the American people think the reason for inflation is government spending more money. Simply not true. Banks are now as profitable as they were before the pandemic. Welcome, Welcome to, to the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we have the ECB about four months behind the United States. They're going to wind down stimulus and then start raising rates. We have the Bank of England has already raised rates twice. We're going to start raising rates this month. With this Russia and Ukraine situation, Europe is going to take a beating. And we all know the European Union was just a project, an experiment. And I don't see it lasting when it comes to the fourth industrial revolution. But as we listen to Christine Lagarde, we see that she sounds exactly like Jerome Powell. Data dependent, and the goal is 2% for inflation. We know inflation is going to run wild and is going to continue to run wild until these rates start to rise. Who calls the inflation? That's the right, the Fed. But who gives the Fed permission to print all this money? That's right, Congress. The puppets. They have already destroyed the dollar. That's the reason why they have so many repo and stimulus projects still going on. Because the market would have tanked and commodities would have went through the roof. Commodities are already running wild. Going into the fall, we're going to have a food crisis. We're going to have an energy crisis. Get yourselves prepared. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows. When it comes to the New World Order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. We will ensure smooth liquidity conditions and implement the sanctions decided by the European Union and European governments. We will take whatever action is needed to fulfill the ECB's mandate to pursue price stability and to safeguard financial stability. The Russia-Ukraine war will have a material impact on economic activity and inflation through higher energy and commodity prices, the disruption of international commerce and weaker confidence. To account the uncertain environment, the Governing Council today revised the purchase schedule for its asset purchase program for the coming months. Monthly net purchases under the APP will amount to 40 billion in April, 30 billion in May, and 20 billion in June. The calibration of net purchases for the third quarter will be data dependent and reflect our evolving assessment of the outlook. If the incoming data support the expectation that the medium-term inflation outlook will not weaken even after the end of our net asset purchases, the Governing Council will conclude net purchases under the APP in the third quarter. If the medium-term inflation outlook changes and if financing conditions become inconsistent, with further progress towards our 2% target, we stand ready to revise our schedule for net asset purchases in terms of size and or duration. After the end of our net purchases under the APP and will be gradual. The path for the key ECB interest rates will continue to be determined by the Governing Council's forward guidance and by its strategic commitment to stabilize inflation at 2% over the medium term. That was not the decision that was made today. The decision that was made was to progress step by step, to acknowledge the added uncertainty that we are facing and to therefore have added optionalities so that we can, in all circumstances, respond in an agile way. You will have noted that 
our decision in relation to asset um, purchases under the APP is conditional and clearly states that we have a declining pace of purchase for Q2 and that for Q3, if the outlook for medium-term inflation is confirmed that by the data, we will indeed end asset purchases. But if on the other hand, the data, which are critically important because we are data dependent in our decisions, do not support this medium-term outlook as we see it now, then we indicate very clearly in the monetary policy statement that I have just read that the Governing Council stands ready to revise both in terms of timeline and in terms of volume its purchases. So it is a conditional uh, provision that you see in our decision. And we are not in any way accelerating. This was in line with our December meeting, with our February meeting and press conference. And what we are doing is confirming our step-by-step -step approach, our maximum optionalities in the face of maximum uncertainty, but also delivering on our mandate, which is price stability. The medium-term inflation outlook, both in the baseline delivered by staff and in the scenarios that you will see tomorrow in details, which are all, of course, a worsening of the situation. There is not a positive and a negative. They're both more negative. But in all those baseline and two scenarios, the medium-term inflation outlook arrives roughly at target. I think in terms of um, optionalities, um, I mean, I'll be happy to expand a little bit because this is clearly what has guided us. And concerning CBDC, um, you, you know my views on, on CBDCs and you know that uh, um, I have pushed uh, that project. Uh, Fabio Panetta is working hard on that together with members in the entire Euro system with a high-level task force that is working really hard on, on moving uh, forward. But in a way, I'm really pleased that attention is now focused on the role that cryptos can play and the role that central bank digital currency can have uh, when, when they are uh, implemented. We have a schedule, as you know. Uh, we uh, decided, the Governing Council decided uh, back in October uh, 21 to launch a two-year uh, investigation phase and it is at the end of that investigation phase that, that the decision will definitely be, may, be made uh, to launch uh, the CBDC and to make it a reality. We can't go wrong with that project. I'm, I'm confident that we will move ahead but that's going to be a decision of the Governing Council. Uh, I think it's an imperative to respond to what uh, the Europeans uh, expect, and I think we have to be a little bit ahead uh, of the curve uh, if we can on that front. So if we, we can accelerate the work, I hope we can accelerate the work. I will certainly support that. And I was delighted to see that uh, in the United States um, there was an executive order by President Biden to actually uh, expect a similar effort and focus and progress on, on CBDCs, cryptos, and I think that it will take all the goodwill uh, of uh, those who want to uh, support sovereignty, who, wants, who want to make sure that uh, monetary policy can be trans transmitted properly uh, using our currency uh, will, uh, will endeavour. On we're going to a different economy and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers.
In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their home countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New Road Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see the fourth industrial revolution, foundation is definitely here robots algorithms drones taking humanity out the picture we have to re-educate but let's get into the video part one king joshua and drama team face the village part two king joshua and drama team face new york long covid 33 Part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tam goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.